want to venture into psychology talk today and this could also be called be be classified as spiritual talk mental talk emotional talk today life is hard um living is hard If it's not one thing in this journey, on this journey, this life journey, it's another. I remember as a youngster, I would hear the older folks say, if you haven't gone through something already, you are going through something now, or you will go through something in the future but there's always always something that is not so pleasant is not so desirable going on in our lives that's just life I remember when my kids were small and they were in such a hurry to grow up (laughs) I remember when Before they got to 12, they couldn't wait to be 12 years old. They couldn't wait to be 13 years old. And then they couldn't wait to be 16 years old. And then they couldn't wait to be 18 years old. And they couldn't wait to be 21 years old. And I would say to those little ones, don't rush it. Enjoy the time you have when mommy and daddy provides for all your needs. Mommy and dad and daddy are the one who are worried about where the food is going to come from or how the bills are going to be paid. You have nothing to worry about, okay? And I would say to them, don't rush it. Enjoy your childhood because adult life is rough. But you know, poor little things, they didn't understand. Had my parents said those things to me, I would not have understood. You don't really understand until you're going through it. But life is hard. Life is hard. If it ain't one problem, it's another. If it's not health problems, sicknesses, pain, diseases of one one kind or or another, if it's not health problems, mental problems, emotional health problems, mental health problems, physical health problems, it's relationship problems. Relationship problems with our children. Our children are getting into trouble. Some people's children, they start getting into trouble from a young age. Constant turmoil with them. They become teenagers that are very challenging and they become adults who are hooked on drugs or alcohol or can't find a job or won't go to school. Then there are the relation, relationship problems with our significant others. Okay, we want our mates to act a certain way and they're unwilling to act that certain way or to comply and there's this constant turmoil between us and our mates then there are the relationship issues with the people we work with or co-workers or neighbors okay relationship issues health issues social issues then There are the issues of finance, okay? We work for someone. Some of us make minimum wage. Some make a little bit more than minimum wage. Some people make good money, but there are a lot of debt. Or the living expenses are high. Take, for example, if you live in New York or California or Pennsylvania or New Jersey, those places are expensive to live so even though one makes the money the money is being spent to live and then some of us have jobs most of us have jobs 
We're slaves. We're wage slaves. We go to the job every morning. We have to be up at five o'clock, some four, five, six o'clock to get to the job. And for eight, nine, 12 hours, somebody tells us when to go to the bathroom, when to pee pee, when to poo poo, when to eat, when to stand, when to sit, if you do get to sit. They own you for the time that you're on the job. You're a slave. And then they decide they don't need you anymore. And they fire you. They set you on fire. They get rid of you. And here you are with a mortgage, um, rent, insurance, taxes, food, light, water, credit card debt, or children to send to school, all these things. And you have no job. No source of income to pay the bills. And then the debt, debt collectors start coming. And it's just one thing after the other. Uh-huh. So life is hard. Life is hard. Life is hard. But you know, that is why we have to daily encourage ourselves because if we are to allow the cares of life to um, be in control of our emotions of how we feel of how we act each day most of us will be walking around with a frown on our faces and sadness in our hearts every single day so how we respond to these cares of life is our decision. It's our decision. I have to decide that even though I don't know where the money is going to come from to pay that mortgage or that rent or whatever it is that we need the money, I, I can choose to walk around with a frown on my face and sadness in my heart or I can, ch I can choose to be hopeful to be hopeful because whether I walk around with a frown on my face or I choose to be hopeful and put a smile in my heart and sing a song and trust and pray it will make no difference really in terms of whether or not I'm going to find well I should not even say that I find that if I have a positive mentality towards my problems, they are not as difficult and I find that they are easier to resolve because I have that positive mindset and that positive energy towards whatever the problem is. Okay, because if you think about it, if I'm walking around with a sad face and a frown on my face, a lot of times people kind of stay away from us when we have that energy. So even if folks could help us, they're staying away from us because our energy is just pungent. But I find that if I have a positive energy, if I sing, if I hum, if I, if I pray, if I laugh, um, if I have a positive aura, positive energy about me, a hopefulness, that I will attract others that are more likely to help to guide me and show me a way how or help in whatever way that they can even if it's just a, to offer a word of encouragement so life is hard but I remember also hearing my parents and grandparents say once there is life, meaning you wake up in the morning and you're breathing and you're alive. You're breathing, you're kicking, you're standing, you're not under the cold clay. Once there is life, there's hope. Okay? If you're not under the cold clay, there's hope that whatever you're going through will resolve. You will come out of it. Okay? And that helps to give us some hope so whatever you're going through 
at this time, I encourage you to be hopeful, to look at the bright side of things, to count your blessings and name them one by one. When, you, when, when you're feeling depressed and hopeless because one or two areas of your life experience aren't going so good, start counting the ones that are going well. The fact that you woke up this morning and you are alive, you did not pass away in your sleep. The fact that you're able to stand on your two feet and to move your own two arms and able to feed yourself and bathe yourself. The fact that you're, you had food to eat, water to drink, clothes on your back, shoes on your feet. Because to be honest with you, as hard as things are, say, in, um, in the United States of America, for example, there are very few people that are walking around bare feet and have, don't have a pair of shoes on their feet. We're so much more fortunate and lucky than people, many people, millions of people all over the world where children don't have what to eat. They're dying every day of starvation. So we need to count our blessings and name them one by one. And once we start counting our blessings and name them one by one, then our perspectives will change. We'll realize that we have more going for us than we have going against us. Because I'm telling you, if you're worried about finance today and you find a job tomorrow and you're making good money and you can pay your bills and save, the next day it'll be something. Okay, it'll be that man you're with who decides he wants to leave. That woman you're with who decides she wants to leave. It'll be that you fall and you break your ankle. Something will be going on. So we have to keep our minds in the right state. A state of positivity and hopefulness and gratitude. And that will help us to get through each day. And you'll be able, we'll be able to go to bed and sleep and sleep comfortably and wake up the next morning in a good mood. Because I'm telling you, if you go to bed in a bad mood, you're going to wake up in a bad mood and the bad mood is going to bring you all kinds of bad things happening to you uh, in, during the day. Bump your toe, somebody curse you out. Once you wake up with that negative energy, you just keep attracting all more and more negative stuff to you. It's very important to go to bed with gratitude on your heart. Write down 20 things for which you're grateful. And wake up in the morning and write down 20 things for which you're grateful. And you'll see how that change your perspective and change your way of being. And you'll realize that the things you have going for you are so much more than the difficulties that you might be experiencing in life. So that's my encouragement to you. That's what helps me. Um, if you see me on the road, for the most part, you're not going to know that I'm having a rough time because I will not wear it on my face because I like to give thanks because I have been through many, many sufferings in this life. And I've seen how the good Lord has brought me through. And I know that whatever it is that I'm going through the good Lord will sustain me and keep me until I'm able to work things through and God the almighty all powerful all giving God has done these things for me and I know he will do the same thing for you because God doesn't love any of us more than the other take care and be blessed and let today be a day of thanksgiving for you remember thanksgiving is not one day of, a, of the year every single day is thanksgiving every day that you woke up and you're able to stand you, you should be thankful that you were able to stand that you can hear and see and smell and taste 
and you're in your right mind and you have a, a, a clothes on your back, shoes on your feet, food to eat, water to drink, family, friends. Okay? Even if you're sleeping under the bridge, there's a lot to be thankful for. God bless you and take care.